The Happiness Roundtable convenes leadership to advance the happiness movement. John de Graff speaks about three concerns for the happiness movement. I have some concerns about the movement, and they, they concern about three little uh, things that are very interconnected. One is, I think, that our, uh, the question, what does happiness mean to you, I think is something we actually really need some better definition of. And I, I frankly think it's a little too unclear. I, I personally like the uh, World Happiness Report based on the Cantrell Ladder and Gallup as a matter of life satisfaction over time. I'm troubled, I must say, by the new focus on the concept of big data, especially big data was about seeing how many times, for instance, on Facebook and Twitter, certain words appeared that were associated supposedly with, with happiness and others with sadness. And when the, the cloud was shown for women, the biggest word in the word cloud indicating happiness for women was the word shopping. But I don't think that shopping, uh, showing up in Twitter and Facebook and things of that sort are indications of ha happiness. In fact, most of the science shows that people shop uh, a lot when they are unhappy. They get a big hit from shopping, much like taking a drug, and then afterwards they have a, 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 you know, a big letdown from that. So I, I think we need to define happiness more clearly. I also think that the, the movement has become too commercial. Uh, with a lot of people pushing their own, here's the way to happiness, and, and I'm the coach, and I'm the guru. And, and to some of that uh, being just a matter of we should just get everybody to smile. And they just get people smiling and, and putting on the, the, the good face in a way that they don't really have to change the organizational structure or the hierarchy or the pay scales or anything like that. Uh, the profits will go up because just by smiling alone, uh, workers will, will do more. The final uh, point I want to make is that I think we've, we've become too personal in, in this in disregarding conditions of life. And, and I, I specifically call attention to the mantra that is out there everywhere, the 50, 40, 10 uh, idea that happiness is 50% genetic, 40% uh, based on attitudes and behaviors and only 10% based on conditions of life. I think that's a really misleading thing. It's number one point made in the Yale class on, on happiness right now and in other things, places. And I think it's just plain wrong. I don't see how you can uh, statistically go from a happiness level of 7.6 in Finland and the Nordic countries to a happiness level of 2.9 in Bur Burundi and other sub-Saharan African countries and claim that that's only based 10% on the conditions of life. It's mathemat mathematically impossible. It certainly could be considered racist. And I think, in fact, the great difference between those countries and their life satisfaction has to do with fairness, conditions of life, sharing, and all of those things. So I think we really have to address the commercialism. I think we have to address the lack of clarity, and we have to address the over-focus. And I don't say that that positive psychology is wrong in suggesting that people uh, do good things and are altruistic and other sort. We can make ourselves happier through these things. I don't, don't question that. But we also have to address the institutional challenges, the poverty challenges, the, the inequalities in the world uh, as challenges to happiness. Learn more about the Happiness Roundtable at happinessroundtable.org and hear from other visionaries and leaders in the happiness movement. Thank you.